share with you this morning. A lot of times we we say words sometimes, we don't know what they mean. There are slang words that I don't like to hear Christian people say. Uh, maybe words that everybody else says, slang words, but really I don't know to come out of our mouth. I mean, it really sounds bad. I've heard a lot of people, I've even heard people get up to church with these words that they shouldn't use. But the Bible says for us, let our, our voice, it should be tamed. It should be tamed to the Lord. You know, I do, when I say things, you know, and I know it's just a lot of, to some people it's a silly thing, just like it, I've, I've said this before, I used to say raising cane all the time. I've talked to you about that before. And, uh, I just, just use it as a word, as a byword, raise the cane. And uh, I was laying in bed one morning or sometime through the night, and it was just like the Lord spoke to me and said, well, who was Cain? And it came right back to mind. and said, well, he was a murderer. And I thought, and it just came right back to me, well, why would I want to raise up the presence of the murderer? And I mean, that might sound silly. Well, that don't mean nothing, but that's exactly what I'm saying. If I'm raising Cain, wasn't Cain a murderer? Yeah. How many times you use words and things slang and other people, even you'll repeat things that other people say, but it don't sound good coming out of your mouth. No. Sometimes if you say words, your children will say them. You'll tell them not to use them words. Yep. But then you use them yourself. What about the word stupid? Bad. How many you use that word stupid my dad used to, he used to, he told my wife one day, he said he just, he just couldn't stand it when he heard the kids call somebody stupid. But before his conversation was over, he saw something on the TV and he said, I want you to look at them stupid idiots. <laughs> so the thing about it is, we, we can hear things out of other people, but we don't hear it out of ourselves. But the Lord wants us to be on guard all the time. Well, that's not what my lesson's about this morning. But it's something to think about because people listen to you, people watching you, being a mentor, I, I try my best to, to hold my tongue, you know. But uh, in Jeremiah chapter 20, and I'd like to talk about, I guess the subject would be a meaning of a name. Uh, today, people just name people anything. They just use all kinds of names. Even churches got all kinds of names. People don't question where they come from why they're even used, but people just use it because somebody else told them. And now it used to be, and I know it's kind of a funny name, and I don't know anybody that was named this, but like the old Indian said, so one Indian's name was Three Dogs Walking. And uh, they said, why would you name your child Three Dogs Walking? I said, well, when, that, when he was born, the first thing he saw is he saw Three Dogs Walking. So, and I don't know if that's why that he did, but I'm just using that as a, as a something to think about, but people, they, they use something that meant something. Just like my name's Glenn, it means uh, the dead. It means something. My children, all their names, all your names has got a meaning. How many's looked up your name to see what your name is? Have you ever done that before? I'm in the Bible. Sometimes, on a, Daniel. Yeah, if you're in the Bible, that's right. But it's got a name. Daniel's got a name. Yeah. All these words come from somewhere. You ever see these words in the uh, they put on medicine that you're taking and you can't even pronounce them. You know, a lot of them words came from Germany, I think, somewhere over there. Am I right, Sister Carly? But I, I, don't, I don't know, but a lot of words, there ain't no way I can pronounce them. I'll just say, well, it starts with an A, it ends with an R, whatever. And, and the thing about it is, we use words all the time. We don't question names. But I tell you what God used to know what it meant. And uh, that's what we want to talk about this morning. I'm going to start out in Jeremiah chapter 20 this morning. And I'm really going to start out the first verse. I'm just kind of laying a little foundation here to give you an idea of what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, now, Pasher, the son of Emmer, the what? He was a priest. Son of the priest, who was also, he was what, what? Chief. He was a chief what? Governor. Governor. In the, in the house of the Lord. I mean, he was in charge. He was the governor over the house of the Lord. 
And Jeremiah went down there and prophesied against Babylon. And it's telling about what this man done. Heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morning that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah to him, now listen, this is what I want you to say. The Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Major Missa Bib, if that's how it's pronounced. But here's what that name meant. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall of their enemies. And thine eyes shall behold it, and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive unto Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give unto the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them. To Babylon, and thou, Passion, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends whom thou hast prophesied lies. In other words, what I'm saying, the Lord changed his name. He said, he said you ain't going to be called Passion anymore, but you're going to be called this uh, Major Miss uh, Missabib. And what it meant that he was going to be a hell. Really, his name meant a curse. And, and that's, what, that's what I want you to see. You know what? There's, there's curses in names. There's curse. There's a, and, a, and there's a blessing. What's the, what's the blessing in what name? What name's got the greatest blessing? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Then who's got the best blessing? The church. We've got the best blessing. If we've got his name, Brother Buck, we've got the best blessing. And that's what I, that's what I want you to see. His name, it means something. It, it, it's above everything. It's above all the church names, all the churches, all the things of this world. There's not another name like Jesus Christ. He has all the power. And that's what, that's what we want to talk to. And I want you to go with me this morning. And you probably want to write these scriptures down. i got a few. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. Verse 23. And probably all of us has read this scripture before. 2 and 23. It's a Bible study, and I like to get into scriptures, not give you my ideas or my thoughts. Where did you ever think woman, uh, the woman got her name at? Jesus. Huh? No. Where did woman get where did woman get her name at? From Manny. Well, let's read it. Two and twenty-three. And Adam said, "This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, and shall and she shall be called what? Woman, woman, because she was taken out of man. Can we change that?" Who made that? Who put that into play? God did. If you read about Adam, he told Adam that all the things and, and the fish and all the animals and everything that, that was made, Adam named it all. And the Lord said he stood and watched Adam what it named. But you know what? Everybody wants to change what God does. Just like now they say, well, there ain't no woman, there ain't no man. Now there's in between. There's people that think they're men and women. I mean, everything that God has done, they change everything. But where did woman get her name at? And she came from his womb. That's where she got her name. All right. Let's go to 320. Genesis, Genesis 3 and verse 20. Why, would, why did Adam call her woman? Everybody, how did, why did Adam call her a woman? 
She came out of his womb. The Bible said that Adam caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. He said it was that he saw that Adam was lonely. He was by himself, and God wanted him to have a help me. So he caused Adam to go to sleep. And he went in and took a rib out of his side. And he made a woman out of that, out of that rib. And she was his helpmate. And he said, she, more or less, she came out of me. She came out of my womb. From here, of course, she's going to be called woman. But then Adam, give her a name too. It's in 3 and 20. And Adam called his wife's name what? He did. Here's why. Because she was the what? Mother of all living. Can we change that? Nope. nope. People can try to come up. Well, they think people brought, was brought down here from outer space. And, and they got all kinds of things. But I'm going to tell you what. Mother Eve, she had a dog. But the thing about it is, he just didn't think up a, a, a name. He gave her a name that meant something. What did her name mean? She was a mother. Y'all can help me this morning. She was the mother of all human, the whole human race. Just like Adam. Adam is considered the father of the whole human race. The Lord referred to him as the first son of God. Because the Lord made him from the dust of the earth and blew the breath of life into him. We can't change that. Man, if God made man, God made woman. God put him in the garden to dress the garden. He sent them out into the world and told them to go and multiply and replenish the earth. We can't change that. That's the way God set it up in the beginning. But man wants to change everything. They want to change the name. In other words, uh, just like I said, it's not Adam and Steve. It's Adam and Eve. And all the, and this is the world is trying to make you forget God's name. Trying to. He said if there's a prophet... Raise up a mind, and he can tell you a dream or prophesy to you something. And even if it come to pass, and he said he tries to draw you, draw you away from the name of the Lord and follow other gods, he said, he said this, God has put this person here to try you to see if he can pull you away. I tell you what, we got we got to we got to stand on the name. We got to stand in the truth. We can't. Amen. There's not other. There's not another truth. If we don't stand in his truth, if we don't stand in his name, we're not going to stand. Amen. We don't have foundation. Right. Today, the one of, a great honor is for a, a woman when she marries a man to take his family name. That's an honor. Nowadays, they don't take the husband's name no more. They keep their own name. Everything that God has honored and put in the word of God, man is changing. Right. But why did they call her Eve? Because there's a mother. She was a mother, wasn't she? All right. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. Y'all know the story about Hagar, how that uh, Abraham and Sarah, they decided to take Hagar in. And, in other words, they were supposed to have a child, and they couldn't have a child, so they, they went to, he, she went to the, and then she became pregnant, and that's where Ishmael came from. And uh, you just wonder, well, where did that name come from? What did that name mean? Did it have a meaning? Was the purpose of it? But the story goes on here that, that uh, she ran from her handmaid. And she was crying. And the Lord, the angel of the Lord found her. One of those, what are you doing here? Anyway, right here in the 11th verse, 16 and 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Does anybody know what the word Ishmael means? No. Huh? Anybody? God listens. God listens. God listens. Did God listen right there? 
Now listen what he said. Now listen what they said. Thou shalt call his name Ishmael because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. That's why they called him Ishmael. It meant something. It wasn't just Ishmael, but the Lord heard my affliction. Don't you think all the days that Hagar, she remembered how that the angel of the Lord spoke to her and said, God heard me where I was at. I was in I was in a dark place. I was in a lost place. But God heard me. And she called his name Ishmael. Now I know these things might sound like a just word searching, but I, I'm going somewhere. <clears throat> all right. Let's go down to the 17th chapter. All these, all these things meant something. They was for the reason they had. And we know the how God called Abram out. And his name was Abram. Did you know that? When God would come up to him, his name was Abram. But listen to what he said in the fifth verse. Genesis 17. I'm, I'm just going to start at the beginning. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the, I'm the Almighty of God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and talked, and God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. This is what he said. God spoke to him and said, And thou shalt be a father of many nations. What if God says so? It's forever, isn't it? This is the verse I want you to say. <clears throat> Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. What do you think the name Abraham means? I preach on this life. I mean, father of many nations. This man's 90 years old. I'll tell you something. This man's 90 years old. He's going around telling people, say, hey, let me tell you what. I'm going to have a son. My wife's going to have a baby. Who do you think people thought Crazy. His name was by faith. The Lord gave him his name. And the Lord, it wasn't just because the Lord picked Abraham out of a bunch of words, but he picked out a name that meant something. It had a meaning behind it. It had, it had anointing behind it because God had spoken it. And said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, you're going to be the father of many nations. And how many believe that came to pass? He became the father of of many nations. Really, probably, if we could chase the bloodline back, probably all of us got some Abraham blood in us. Because his, he said he would multiply him as the stars of heaven for multitude. And like the grains of sand on the sea, he would multiply his people. We got in through the line of the tribe of Judah. We got in through Jesus Christ. All right. Let me say amen. amen. All right. I'm not going to read. I'm going to jump down to... Uh, 15th verse. And God said, now he's talking about his wife. Now Sarah's name wasn't Sarah, but was Sarah, if I'm pronouncing it right. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. Shall her name be and I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Bless her and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings and people shall be of her. Why, why they call her that? She was a, she's a mother of nations. That's what it means. In other words, God was giving her a blessing. Not, in other words, they were, when they said that name, it just wasn't Sarah or Bill or Charlie or Sally or, but it, like our names, we, we don't take the thought names. Mm -hmm. But in the Bible, they took the thought, every one of these names. Have you ever thought about this before? Her name wasn't Sarah anymore. God said, I'm going to give you a new name. Mm -hmm. 
your name's going to be Sarah. And it's going to mean that you're going to be the mother of kings and nations, and I'm going to bless you. How many glad for the blessings? Amen. 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 All right. Let's read right on down. Verse 16 says, And I will bless her and give thee a son of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham, listen, I want you to catch this. Then Abraham fell on his face and what? Laughed. Laughed. I believe with that too. If I was, if I was 99 years old and God told me I was going to have a child, I'd say, I'll probably say, oh Lord, please. I don't think we can handle it anymore. Yeah. But he never had a child. But listen <laughs> what he said. And he said, and Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael, talking about his first son, might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name what? Everybody. Isaac. Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. How many knows what the name Isaac means? Huh? Does anybody know? If you, look, if you look it up, it means, wait, I wrote it down. He who laughs, he who will laugh. laugh. That's what Isaac means. What did you say Ishmael means? Ishmael means uh, God listens. If you back up there in that scripture, you can see it, why it says why they named him. Because God heard her when she cried out to him. It tells you here what it means. Just like right here, it tells you what it means here. Said Abraham, when God taught him this, he said he laughed. And Isaac, the name means he who laughs will laugh. He laughed when he told him that. And the thing about this, all down through his, all down through his life, he was known by that. He said, "This is Isaac. He was born of a man a hundred years old." His father laughed when God told him that he was going to be born. How many of you knew that God, that Abraham laughed? How many's read that? How many's read in there where Sarah laughed? Y'all yeah. read that in there? Well, the thing about this, she did laugh. And that's what she's known by. Abraham was going to be known as the father of many nations. Not right now, but as what was going to come. Sarah was going to be the mother of nations and kings. And all down through time, woman, we all know who the first woman was upon the earth. We know who Eve was. She was her husband because she was the mother of of all of all people, of all the human race. And all these names meant something. And I like this one about he who laughs. That's what Isaac meant. If you look up the name Isaac, that's what it means. He who laughs. But if you look why that means that, you look here in the 17th verse, then Abraham fell on his face and what? And laughed. All right. Let's try another one. Let's go to Genesis 32. 32. Genesis 32. The Bible talks about how the Jacob, he wrestled with an angel and how the angel gave him a new name. What was his new name? Did anybody know? Israel. Israel. Where did the name Israel come from? God gave it to him. He said his name will be called Israel. The angel of the Lord spoke to him. said his name shall be called Israel. How many knows what uh, Jacob meant? Huh? Deceiver. Does it mean deceiver? 
Yeah, but it means surplanter. What's that? Surplanter means uh, is to supersede another, especially by force or treachery. Isn't that what he done? Yeah. He took over his brother's birthright. Uh, it says to take the place and to serve as a substitute, or especially by reason of superior excellence or power. In other words, take the place. If Jacob had lived on his life, he would have been known as the man that stole his brother's birthright. Wouldn't he? You know why? Because that was his old man. That's why the angel said, what's your name? He said, my name's Jacob. Well, we know what Jacob means. It means, in other words, I'm, not, I'm named, I'm, I'm Sir Planner. I'm the one that took my brother's birthright. And he was in guilt then. He, he was in a repenting state, really, when he, was, when he was before the angel. And even the angel wrestled with him through the night. The angel stood him in the thigh of the leg and had jumped out of joint. And uh, he said, he wouldn't let go. He said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. And he said, what's your name? He said, my name's Jacob, which meant Sir Planner. He said, no, I'm not, you're not going to be Jacob, no more you're going to be Israel. Because Israel meant prince with God. In other words, from that day, Israel was going to be God's firstborn. He was going to be his prince. All right, we're going to read it here. Maybe I'm taking too long. Going too slow. Uh, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called, I'm sorry, I'm waiting for y'all to get there. 32 and 28. And thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But what? 32. Genesis 32, verse 28. Now see, his name was Jacob. His father named him Jacob, which meant Sir Planner. But you see how it meant something? And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but everybody. Israel. Here's why he named him Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men. Hath prepared. That's why he was called Israel. He, he was known by Jacob pretty much his life, but when he got the blessing from God, God changed his name. He changed it from the name Sir Planner, he named him to, to the prince. A, as a, he had power with, as a prince with God. So does everybody see why he had his name? Everybody familiar with this story? Yeah. Isaac had two sons. What was it? Esau. Jacob and what was the other one? Esau. Esau. But Esau was the firstborn. He was the one that was entitled to the birthright. But he wasn't one God chose it because of his attitude, because of his temperament, because of what kind of person he was. <laughs> Holding on to Esau's heel when he came out. But the one that was out first should have been the guy that blessed. Yep. And we read on how that later on he even tricked his brother into taking his birthright. And he, even his mother got involved and they put goat skins on his arms. So he took goat skins. And he went in the presence of his father, his brother couldn't see, and he gave the blessing to Jacob. Well, he had a blessing, but he didn't get it by right. He, he got it because he kind of cheated to get, get it. But when he held on to God, he you know, he was sorry for that. He was sorry that he did his brother that way. All his life he bore that. All the things he went through down there. When he married Rachel and Leah, and he took on the, the other two handmaids and had all these sons and it seemed like everything was against him, but when he was going back home, he was on his way home to make things right with his brother. That's kind of all he had. But he knew nobody could help him but God. And he wasn't going to let go of God till God gave him the blessing. And this morning, there's things in our lives that we're trying, we're trying to overcome. We're trying to overcome our name, overcome our past, the things that we've went through. 
That the only way we can is we need a blessing from God. We need something in our life. We need an anointing. We need a new name. God's given us a new name. Amen. We, we're called by His name. All right. Anybody else got a question before we go any farther? All right. First Kings. Amen. Are with me? I'm going to start with 42. <coughs> For they shall hear of thy great what? What was their name? God's people the children of Israel, what was their name? <coughs> what did the angel tell Jacob his name was? <coughs> Israel. <coughs> That's where they got their name. That's where he got his name. Therefore, all of his children, his grandchildren, and they became a nation, and they was called Israel. That's why they was called the children of Israel. All right. For they shall hear of thy great name, Israel, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray for this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people, Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. What was God's name? Now we can go in the Bible and we can find a lot of uh, the titles for God. How many read in there where it said, said, said uh, his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He was known by Jehovah. All of these names all meant something. They was describing God. I tell you what, can you really describe God today? I mean, God is so great. He's so he's awesome. He's, he's awesome. Yeah. I mean, God is so great. In your life, what is God to you? So, what is his name to you? His name was hid back there. All through this, his name was hid. But still yet, he picked out chosen names. All right, go with me to Isaiah 45 and 4. He was talking about Israel. Forty-five and four. I say a forty-five and four. I'm going to read four and five. Surname is. But you know what your surname is? 
It's one your daddy gave you. Oh, yeah, my name was my name. Your surname's what? Daddy. Blankenship. 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 My surname's Jenkins. That's what was, that was what was given to me. That was my given name. That's a family name. That's handed down. A God give them their name. He give them a name. He wanted them to be called by that name. All right, let's, let's just, I'll just take a few examples here before I go any farther. What about uh, other people that God changed their names? What about Simon? What was the name God gave him? Peter. Peter. We all know that, don't we? I don't know what Simon meant, but the Lord gave him a new name. He gave all of his disciples. Jesus gave all of his disciples. Yeah, he named them. I don't know if he named them all, but he brought them. There's a lot of them through there I see where he changed them. He could give them a name. Yep, his name meant the stone. That's what Peter meant, the stone. That's just what I'm saying. God gave them, gave them names. That meant something. What the names they meant. In other words, Peter's name was Simon, but the Lord called him Peter. What do we refer to him as? What we call him Peter. Call him Peter. That's what the Lord said he would be called. Who's some other ones? Paul. Paul. Okay. What was what was Paul's name before the Lord called him? So. Saul. What did Saul represent? He probably represented a, a Sanhedrin leader. He killed the Jews. He killed the church. He stood and held the coats of them and stoned Stephen. He testified about a lot of things. But his name wasn't going to be known as Saul no more. God said, your name is going to be called Paul. I'm going to call you Paul. That's just what I'm saying. But a name means something. It, it's not just a name that you pull out of there, but it means something. That's just like Jesus Christ. It's a name. It means something. It means something from heaven. Anybody think of anybody else? John. How about uh, James and John? You know what the Lord called them? The sons of thunder. They meant something. I wonder why he called them that. I don't know. Probably if he'd run it out, it's because they maybe they was bold and they was ready to do the work. All right. Go with me to uh, Isaiah 62 and 2. 62. Isaiah 62 and 2. Israel got so corrupt. Got so corrupt. That they even done away with their name. 62 and 1. 62 and verse 2. How many's ever heard the name Samaria? Heard the name Samaria? You know where that name came from? It was a hill. It was a wicked hill. And the king of Israel, he made his dwelling place there, and he changed the name of Israel to Samaria. So he done away with the name. Can't you see all the way down through time? Everything has tried to do away with the name. Everything has tried to change his name. And I'm going to tell you what. Well, I'm going to wait. I don't want to give you a all right, 62 and 2. This is Isaiah was prophesying, and he said, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. They'll live right, don't they? All kings. And all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by what? New name. New name. A new name, which the what? The mouth, of the Lord. mouth of the Lord shall name. What is that new name? What is that new name? You got a new name? What is it? Jesus Christ. We've got a name that's above every name. That's our, that's our surname. That's our family name. As great a man as Abraham was, but he still couldn't supersede that his son was going to come out of his loins, which was going to be Jesus Christ. Nothing could be over that name. And what I'm trying to say is when you speak that name, 
It not just, it's not just a name. People put bumper stickers out and they say Jesus is Lord, but that's, they don't speak when they don't realize that when you speak that name, that it has a meaning. So Jesus, he, he was Savior. He's the anointing. He's God Almighty. When we go out, take people out and baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ, we call heaven and earth record. And people's sins are remitted. God brings his count together and raises people from the dead. The Bible said as many of us baptized into Christ, we put on Christ. I mean, can Amen. you think what that name is? And they, when they asked Peter at the gate of beautiful how the miracle that he done on that man, he said, it's not by me. He said, it, but it's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, that's how this man, it's by his power. I get ahead of myself. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Verse 31. And he got 31. 31. <laughs> I might go backwards, Brother John. <laughs> John. How about 21? That worked all right. 21. Matthew what? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Now this is when he was speaking to Joseph. The angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph. People says Christ is not a name. But 1 Timothy, I think it's 2 and 15, he said the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you want to write this verse down, it's in Acts 11 and 26. Acts 11 and 26. Anybody know what that says? It's talking about the church gathering ourselves together. And so they was first called Christians at Antioch. Do you think Christian means something? Mm -hmm. What's it mean? Christ-like. Christ -like. Is all this church world here Christ-like? No. So they're, they're coming in another name. That's right. Because our God's name is heaven. It's anointing. It's without sin. When we speak his name, when we speak, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself again. All right, let's go here. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Jesus. Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Do you know what Jesus means? Savior. Savior. How many believe he's a Savior? Amen. Not just like the world believes on him, but I mean he's really a Savior. He has done what nobody else could do. He laid down his life for the sin of the world. He's overcome all things, death, hell, and the grave. He's done it for me and you. And when we speak the name of Jesus, it is not a name that we stick out there right out there. But it means something. It means power. It means anointing. It means the work that he done on Calvary. When we baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm just not, it's just not that name, but it's what he's done, what he's accomplished, what he stands for. That's what we are as Christians. We're, we live, try to live Christ-like, walk after him. Look like him, uh, talk like him. All the things that he did, that's what we ought to be about. That's what the name means. I hope you all see where I'm going this morning, how that the name means something. Speak real loud. I think that's like uh, 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 Jesus Christ died for us on the cross for our sins. And when it says, you know, you have no love for charity. If you have no love, no love. And to lay down and your life. Uh, uh, yeah. Your brother. That you will lay down your life for your brother. That's right. That's the charity he's talking about. That's what he did for us. He died for us. Amen. We got to be willing to die for our life. That yeah. means here. Sin's got to die out. It's got to. Amen. If we carry his name, we can't live in sin anymore. We can't walk in the ways of the world. We can't be like the other churches. 
All right. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 1. And this is the second witness is when the angel was speaking to Mary. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name what? Jesus. So what's his name? Jesus. Is his name Father? No. Jesus. Is his name Son? No. Is his name Brother? Cousin? Was he a brother? Yeah. yeah. Was he a father? Yes. Yeah. Was he a son? Yes. But what's his name? Jesus. The angel changed his name to Jesus. When Abraham, when God spoke to Abraham and said, Your name's not going to be no more Abram, but it's going to be Abraham, what was his name? Abraham. Could anybody change that? The blessing was upon him. That name had a blessing. He was going to be the father of many nations. And no matter how much the devil fights and wars, he's still the father of many nations. Jesus is still the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And his name is called Jesus. And he was known by Jesus, by the people that was around him. But he wasn't the, the name Christ. They wasn't known, he wasn't known as the Christ. What's, how many knows what the Christ means? The anointing. But it just don't mean like any old anointing, like we come up here and pray, but it's talking about the anointing that overcome the world. The Savior that overcome the world. That's what it means. His name is a name that's above every name. Every name. There's power in that name. We speak his name, it's a prayer in itself. It makes kings bow, brings kingdoms down. Just this name, how much power, how much authority is in it. All right, get uh, one more scripture here with me. 1 Corinthians 1 and 24. Probably a lot of you have met that and read this before. 1 Corinthians 1 and 24. Now, I haven't given you no thoughts or theories, even these names I'll, sh I'll show you where the definitions are at what they mean this book re interprets itself This was spoken because it was spoken in the prophet Isaiah in chapter 7, verse 14. The same thing. And a lot of things that Jesus done, he said this was all done, that it might be fulfilled what was written in the scriptures back here. All these things, they all they all meant something. That's just like that. Uh, did Jesus speak in tongues? Sure. Yeah. Sure did. You remember when Jesus was on the cross? Yeah. And he cried, he lie, 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 the batch and I. Was he speaking in yeah. times? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. In time. Then his own people, his own people who spoke his language, thought he was called for Elijah. They didn't know what he was what he was doing. They even said, let's wait and see if Elijah comes. But they didn't know what he was saying. But it had to be interpreted what he said. But it had been interpreted in the scripture, in the Psalms, the 22nd Psalm, I think it is. He said, my God, my God, why thou forsaken me? Everything about God's word. All right, this uh, 1 Corinthians 1. 24. But to them which are called both Jews and Greeks, 
Christ, the law, the power of God, and the law, and the wisdom of God. If you get over to the book of Proverbs, you can hear wisdom talk. Have you ever heard when he said, let wisdom put forth her voice and understanding? All the knowledge, all the power, all the wisdom is in Christ. The Bible said it pleased God that in him should dwell all the fullness of the Godhead body. And he's all in all, and we're in him. And if we're not in him, we're outside of him. The whole world, they found other places to get, but there's no place to get other than in his name. The Catholics think they got the name. The Baptists think they got it. But all these names, they all came from men. They all came, they came from something else. But there's one name that was given is above every name. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Don't know, I got a young boy right now. He's, he's wrestling with getting baptized. He lives a long way away from here. He's having trouble finding somebody to baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ. And he don't want to be baptized in no baptistry. He wants to do it the way they did it in the Bible. That's right. He's having trouble finding a place to go to church. We're a long way from here. The thing about this, that's, that's something. you got a great privilege, yeah. amen, to have his name, to be able to speak his name. Yeah. One time, there's been a times when you couldn't speak his name. You right. couldn't go by his name. Well, it's like that name. Yep. You can, you can say anything, but there's sporting events, all kinds of things. You can't mention the name of Jesus. They'll tell you you can say father or son. But you can't mention the name of Jesus. And that same thing happened back then. It's still happening today. But people can't see it. Same thing. Yeah, they even took the prayer out of school. i tell you what, children. It's just like I've said before. I don't even like to call myself apostolic. Nope. Because I know where the name comes from. It comes from man. I don't want to be called a Baptist. Because I know where the name comes from. It came up. It was half stuff for me. All these names, all these titles, all these denominations, they all come from men. But there's only one true name, and it's Jesus Christ. How many say amen? Amen. Ain't you glad you're called by his name? Yes, I am. You know, when David went down to fight the giant, what was it he did? What was it he told the giant? He said, I'm coming in what? In the name of the Lord. It wasn't just a sign that said Lord on it, Jesus is Lord. But what he was doing, he was coming in the power and in the authority and in the wisdom of God. If we know what God's word said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We can overcome all things through his, through his word Amen. and through the power of his might, through his anointing. I'll tell you what, this, this, the, I, just, I can't get out of this thing about the name. I've been in it for <laughs> probably last yeah. year or so. But, I'm, but there is, there's something about that name. name. We sing that song. Yep. There's something about that name. And it's not just Jesus. And I know a lot of people say, well, it don't really matter. It does matter. I've, I've showed you here this morning that the name really does matter. He didn't just pick a name out of random and said, this is what we're going to use. But he took out something that it meant something. Do you realize when you say Jesus Christ, all right, that's like the word Christian. If I tell people I'm a Christian, I'm saying that I'm like Christ. Or I'm striving to be like Christ. Did you know that the Ku Klux Klan is a Christian organization? Yep. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of the government, yep. they kill people, hang people in trees, and do all kinds of stuff. People come and do stuff in the name of the Lord, but they're not, they're not God's people. No. These be. books that we got in the Bible, do you know where the name Corinthians came from? They was, these people was called Corinthians because this was the church that was at Corinth. They was from a city called Corinth. Mm -hmm. And they was called Corinthians. There was more than one of them. That's where that name came from. Romans. Where do you think that name came from? Mm -hmm. The church at what? Rome. Rome. What about Galatians? Church of Galatia. What about Colossians? The church at Colossus. Mm -hmm. All of these names, they all meant something. They all was given for a reason. Yeah. I, I don't know if you, some of you see here the importance of the name this morning. I'm just I'm just saying God's name is important. Jesus. And it means, you know, when we, just like 
when we pray and we give his name. He said, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. When you do something in his name, his authority, his power, his wisdom, his anointing, it's all in that name. It's in that. So when we ask something in the name of Jesus Christ, if I'm laying hands on Brother Buck and Brother John and with anointing and praying over him in the name of the Lord, like the Bible tells us to, it's not that I'm anything, that the Brother Johnny or Brother Don is anything, but what we're praying, we're calling on all God's authority, all his anointing, all his power. We don't know how much power we got because we don't really know his name. We need to know his name. You just don't know his name by being able to speak it, but you know him, you learn about him, you learn about what he means, what he is, what he's done. There's power in his name. That's why Peter and John, they, they learned, hey, this is the mighty God that just came down from heaven. And that's why that, what they had, when they walked up to that man in the gate of beautiful, Peter said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, what he had. He had the name of Jesus Christ. He had faith. He said, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up. And he took him. And he went through the temple, praising God, lifting up his hands. I'll tell you what. There's something in his name today. And that's just what I'm saying. And I don't have time to go any farther, but I, I just want to tell you. Ever since the beginning, they've done everything to take away his name. Yeah. They took his name away in the church. They took his name away in the government. When the, when the Catholic, when Constantine, in 325 A.D., when the Council of Nicaea, he so called, brought all the preachers and the elders and the bishops from the world, he brought them into one place. And he done away with the name of Jesus Christ to do away with persecution. The pagans and Christianity can't walk together. I tell you right now, all of us, we can go out here and we can mix with any church. And we can have a good time as long as we don't mention his name. Right. And when you mention his name, it'll bring the vision. Mm -hmm. You get up and tell people they got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it's like throwing a bucket of water on the ground. Yeah, exactly. They can shout and sing, but when you mention that, they're ready to fight. Mm -hmm. What kind of spirit is that? Is that the same spirit that he's talking about? Oh. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody? I was on, I was kept right on time. Bless you, Danny, good job. Yeah. Anybody else got anything this morning? The kids got anything this morning? Don't want to sing a song or something this morning? Tell us what you learned in Sabbath school this morning.